this part needs to develop in most systems, or can you just to apply a finite volume? Can you just expect the system to be smooth and continuous? Oh yeah, if you expect the solution to be smooth, you can still use finite volume, and there are still good reasons to do to do that. Uh, except for if you expect the solution to be smooth, actually finite element, which we're going to be talking about uh, after spring break, is likely better option than finite volume, right? So, so you still wouldn't go back to finite uh, uh, difference in the case when you have a complex geometry and things like that. But like, uh, if a solution is smooth and you don't want to use finite difference, uh, think about a finite element. So finite volume is really suitable if you have discontinuities. So f is u squared over 2. That's encoded over here. And uh, speed of discontinuity is going to be equal to the difference between f, right? Uh, let's say 2 to n minus f of 1 to n minus 1 divided by u2 to n minus u1 to n minus 1. All right. OK. So the speed of discontinuity determines if I should take the interface flux as my left flux or right flux. So my f interface is going to be, uh, let's first choose my yes yeah all i need is the sign of that that's right that's right um so so in some sense i if i'm actually coding up uh, uh like a production level solver i wouldn't compute this because uh, there would be the danger of this equal to that and i'm going to be dividing zero by zero i'm going to get next so in in reality what i would probably be doing is actually times right because if i only need the sign of that either doing multiplication or division would get me the same result but uh it may be confusing to people like uh, why you are doing that <laughs> if you see that in the code uh, you, you should know that uh, uh, people actually want just the sign of this not the not its value okay so f at the interface would be, I'm going to set it to f at 1 to n minus 1 first. I'm just going to take the left value. So I want the f interface that is of length n minus 1, right? Because I only have n minus 1 interior interfaces. Okay, and f interface uh, for speed um, sign of discontinuity sign to be so so i would to take the left value which is already there if the sign is greater than zero so i'm just going to take it less than zero to be equal to f um, so let me actually f right is equal to f2 to end uh, f right of the same same thing Okay, does it make sense? So this is uh, uh, basically what is inside there is a condition telling me if I should uh, uh, choose that value in this array or not. Why do I have to, sorry? Oh, because my left hand side and right hand side of this assignment has to be of the same length. Right, so, so first of all, I don't want to overwrite the part of at f interface at which the speed is greater than zero, which means the wave is moving towards the right and I should take the left value. So I want to uh, take this condition here to only assign values to the interfaces at which the shock is moving towards the left. And then what I assign has to be of the same, the right hand side of the assignment has to be the same as, same length as the left hand side of the assignment. So I have to also index this flux right with the same indices. Right. So this is a, this type of indexing is called the Boolean indexing. So, so I'm going to take that entry of the array if the condition evaluated is to be true. I'm not going to take it if the condition evaluated is to false. 
Yes. If that's the case, equals to affect or speed of continuity underscore sign. Without the because that wouldn't change the line. Sorry, are you suggesting getting rid of that? No, just the lesson here. That part you have to put it up here on the right hand. Oh, uh this array is not a boolean array it's a it's a, a real valued array right so so in matlab you cannot or any programming language you can't index an array using a real valued array you can either index an array with an integer or a boolean right with integer just that means you are choosing a fixed set of uh, indices with boolean you are basically choosing the indices uh, for the for the ones that evaluates to be true okay all right then not only I need the interfaces in the interior between two cells I would also need the flux on the very left and very right that usually depends on boundary conditions right so for example if for this Burgess equation, if my boundary condition is u is equal to zero on the left and right, what flux should I get? Zero, right? So um, for zero boundary condition, I have to have f interface equal to zero, f interface zero, okay? So now I have the flux at all of these n plus one interfaces, including the two n's boundaries. What's next is just to apply mechanically the conservation law, right? The conservation law translated into finite volume is d dt of the integral, which is delta x times ui, right? Delta x times ui is the integral because ui is the average, okay? Is equal to f at i minus half minus f i plus half okay which means if you divide this delta x out this is what i get ddt of the cell average is equal to the difference between the interfaces interface flux on the left and on the right divided by the cell size so let's do that du dt would be equal to f interface 1 to n minus 1 to minus f interface 2 to n the difference divide by delta x all right that completes our implementation of finite volume and if you want to implement finite volume for other equations you would just want to change this if you have a different equation right that's the only thing you need to change okay so let's try this for our Burgess equation and uh, let's actually copy the same code uh, that we used uh, on the last lecture uh, evaluate uh, let's just uh, copy sections of the code so we have n we have x uh, actually we want to start with a u that satisfies the boundary condition uh, maybe we don't have to and uh, uh, where is my lecture 12 so n let's say is equal to 100 um, okay I set a u0 x u0 but I think I'm just uh, calling a, a wrong function okay so this is my initial condition and the last lecture, we, we know that uh, the wave speed for the part of the solution that are positive is positive, so it moves towards the right. And the wave speed for the part of the solution that are negative moves towards the left, so a shock wave forms at x about 0.2, right? So here, let's uh, change our function to be ddt finite volume. Now, 
it's solved with no problem. So let's plot our x and u at the very end to see what we get. Um, okay, 